Okay, everybody. I've just received uh, in the last couple of days the new Sky. I think is it Sky Q Hub or Sky Hub Q. Anyway, it's the new hub. Um, I was having serious problems with connectivity with the old hub. It's the one that stood up. It was black and it's got the smiley face on it. Um, which actually is quite, I like that because it, it, it was, you know, when it was flashing orange, it was showing it was, it was in trying to connect. And then when it was fully connected, it changed white and you'd see the smiley face. Um, but for the last six months, I've been having connectivity problems with it. Before it used to work, any laptop I had in the sitting room worked relatively fine, no real problem. But in the last six months, there was, I was having serious problems, wouldn't connect properly. And I've also bought a new laptop, um, the Asus um, Transformer. Um, to be honest with you, I found that actually this is a, <laughs> it, it's still a problem. This Asus will not connect properly in the sitting room. But the other laptops, the three other laptops I've got, um, are now connecting fantastically either on the 2.4 gigahertz or on the 5 gigahertz. Uh, and they're working at speed, which is great. It's really, really nice. So I've now, I, I've now found the ASUS. This is the second ASUS that I've had that I've had problems with um, in the transformer range. Um, the original one that I had, oh, I think it was the T100. Um, I thought it was a great machine to look at and at, at first, but I found it was really clunky. Um, it was sometimes slow. You were worried sometimes it wouldn't, um, you know, get to the next page. It, it was just, just something really seriously clunky about it. Um, the new one that I've got, I can't remember what it's called now, um, but it's a, an updated version of that, a lot thinner. I actually like the look of it. I like the love the feel of it. Um, it looks much better than the older one, but there is a problem with the Wi-Fi in the sitting room with it. It just will not connect properly, and um, so that's the reason why um, I went and assumed part of the. There was a problem with the router because the other laptops and tablets weren't connecting to it properly either. But now that I've got the new one, they're connecting fine as it should be. This one is still having a problem in the sitting room. But when I bring it into the room, whether into my bedroom, the router is basically it's just outside the door. Works fine. No problem at all. So, it, it, you know, it's a little bit annoying because I, I really wanted to use this in the sitting room but as long as it works and, and I, you know I'm in my room it and even with the door shut it's working fine um, but sometimes I like to take it in the next door so I have to take the other tablets that I know that are working in into there so anyway so um, I'm gonna go through because um, I haven't gone through it myself to be honest with you, um, it's very the same, virtually the same, exactly the same as the old one. There's not much difference. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. Sorry, let me just scroll down here. Yeah, so it just shows device connected to your your home network or devices. Sorry. And you can see mobile phone there, Android phone, another Android phone, etc., etc. Um, you've got the state. You've got the at the top here. You've got the menus: wireless, Ethernet, security, maintenance, advanced support, licenses information. So, um, also we've got here summary status. We configure your SkyHub with all the settings. To enable it to work straight away, advanced users will find it links below to common settings you may wish to change. 
um, for more settings, select the menu options at the top of this page, which I've already shown you. Um, so we can see the status of your broadband and wireless network. Broadband is connected, wireless is enabled, and as you can see, there are two um, wireless networks, the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz. So this is the difference between this one and the old router. There are now two um, wireless net, um, settings, two wireless SSIDs. Uh, which is uh, you know the 2.4 and and which means that the 2.4 I see as the steady signal, um, whereas and it will work further throughout the home. It's it's a stronger signal, but it's not faster signal. The five gigahertz is the faster signal, but works at a shorter distance. So, you know, if you're nearish to the router, you will get the really faster speed on the 5 gigahertz. Whereas if you're further away um, and you want to connect, but you're not too bothered, it's not too bothered about the speed, um, you're likely to see the 2.4 better. So there might be three, four bars on the 2.4, whereas there might only be two bars on the five gigs or even one bar uh, and so the performance will be lower because of the distance so it works on the distance the 2.4 is good better for distance the five gigahertz is better at shorter distance but faster speed um my wireless network is visible current wireless channel six for the 2.4 gigahertz and i'll show you where you can change that and 36 for the 5 gigahertz and i'll show you where you can change that uh wireless encryption is wpa2-psk okay so um let's look at these other menus at the top here ethernet again now i should have i didn't say at the beginning what you know to to log into your router you will you will need the um, oh god my IP address and uh, which is one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one. Now that's written on the router as well. If you forget the number, uh, you forget the number, and you put that into your um, browser in the address bar. Now, um, the username is, is always admin, and the password is always Sky, S-K-Y. So you then just, you just log in, and it will now take you, it's taken us to the Ethernet setup. And here you can change it from gigaports to fast Ethernet, which is 100 um, megabytes, so, whereas the Ethernet is gigabytes, so just leave it there. You got energy efficient Ethernet, yeah, just leave it alone. Okay, and then just click on apply if you've changed it. Go let's go to security. Uh your Skyhub will log security related events such as admin logins. If you have set up content and web filtering on the, the block pages, your Skyhub will also log when someone on your network tries to access a blocked site. So you can see what roughly what people are doing. Um, so yeah. Just have a look and see. Yeah, there's not nothing much really there. Okay. Um, then in security, you've got block sites, so you can block sites. You can set up your Sky Hub to filter web pages. There are two ways to filter uh, websites using your Sky Hub. You can block access to certain domain names. In the example, using the BBC. <laughs> Yahoo! They're using the BBC as an example to block 
a domain name. Domain name. Mm. In this example, www.bbc.co.uk, the name domain name is bbc.co.uk. All block sites that contain certain words in their URL. So <laughs> anyway, once a block is set, a user trying to access a block site will see a message saying that the site has been blocked by the Sky Hub administrator. So it's funny how they use BBC. They're competitive. Okay. Um, so you just type it in there and just add what you want to. Uh, block sites containing these keywords. Blah, blah, blah. And all you see them there. Um, then you've got, you can change your settings here for the firewall. You know. Um, outbound services. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know. So it's, it's quite interesting. The um, IPv6 is IPv6 and not 4 anymore. Um, so they've moved fully over to that, which is good. Then you've got services. The services menu contains a list of user defined services for creating firewall rules. If a service doesn't appear in the predefined uh, services list in the firewall rules menu, you can define the service in this menu. The new service will then appear in the firewall rules list, services list. Uh, so this is related to firewalls. Then you've got schedules. Uh, if you set firewall rules on the, uh, on the rules page or keyword filtering on the block pages, you can set up schedule for the time of day the rules apply. There you go. So, you know, you can have it every day, Sunday, you can have it a certain time of the day. It's just a schedule. Uh, then we can go on to maintenance. So here in maintenance, you've got uh, what it does. It shows the page, is, the, this page shows the current settings of your Skyhub. We have pre-configured your Skyhub with the optimum settings. Mm. This is a read-only summary. If you wish to change settings, use the menus at the top of this page. Select Show Statistics to see your Skyhub performance statistics, such as the number of packets sent and number of packets received for each port. Select connect, uh, Connection Status to see information about your current connection. So here we have... Sky details, manufacturer Sky model ER115. There's the firmware version, DSL firmware version, etc. And then it says modem is connected, traffic PTM, line uh, right up, up upstream, line right downstream, and it shows IPVK loopback address right so you've got port band port um and then you've got all the other settings you've got the land port and settings you've got wireless settings it's quite interesting so you can see everything there um now we can then move on to devices that are connected to your sky hub at the moment this page shows the ip address and mac address media access control address for each device attached to your sky hub to update this page and to show the current attached devices select the refresh so attach devices so you've got the um ipv4 address so there are devices connected to this um that's probably my laptop oh no that's my other laptop this is i don't know what that is that's probably a phone this is my definitely my mobile phone so there are six things connected to this at the moment uh, but and there are six things connected to the, something to do with the ip6 okay so we've got to see the what devices so you can see what devices connected 
that you know should show PlayStation, um, or the Microsoft one. I can't remember what it's called. Um, you know, and other devices on your 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 the Sky that's using the Sky Hub. Uh, backup settings. This page allows you to backup, restore, and erase your Sky current settings. Once you have your Sky Hub configured to your requirements, you should backup the information so it's available. If something goes wrong. When you backup the settings, they are saved as a file on your computer. You can restore your hub settings. You can do that, so it will just go onto your um, laptop. Okay, so set password. So you can change the password here. Now, using this page to change the password, you use to access these pages. This isn't your My Sky password. If you change the password and you have backed up your Sky Hub settings previously, you should have to do a new backup so that the includes a new password and so on and so on. Okay, so you can come in here and change your password. Right, you've got diagnostics. Diagnostic. You can use this page to to perform various diagnostics from your Sky Hub. So you can ping IP address from here. And you can do um, perform a DNS, DNS lookup. I'm not bother doing that. Um, and you can also reboot the Skybox uh, router from here. Let's go to upgrade. We will per periodically update your Sky Hub software automatically. There may be times when you will be advised to do this manually. SkyTech support team will assist you in this if this is the case. Inform once you've selected upload, do not interrupt the process of uploading software on your Sky Hub or restart the Sky Hub. If you think the process may be interrupted in this way, please cancel to keep the current uh, software, Hub software. Okay. Okay, let's click on Advance. So you've got the wide area network set up. Uh, using this page, you can set up several parameters related to WANG, wide area network connection. You shouldn't change this parameter unless you have a specific route to do so. And an advanced user. Specifying a default DMN, DMZ server allows you to set up a computer or a server that is available to anyone on the internet for services that you haven't defined. There are security issues with doing this, so only do this if you're willing to have open access to your network. If you don't, if you, sorry, just have a bit of a yawn. If you don't assign a default DMZ server, your Skyhub discards any incoming service requests which are undefined. This can be a security risk. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, so you can now go to chat, do something in change for dynamic setup DNS. Okay. Let's go to now to LAN IP setup. I, the thing is, I'm just going through the settings that you can see. Um, you won't need to go this far to be looking, but it's good to see. And we're all going to see what you know is, is in your router. Get to be familiar with your router. Remote management. Using the remote management menu, you can access. You can allow a user on the internet to configure, upgrade, and check the status of your Sky Hub. Importantly, if you enable remote access. Remote management on your Skyhub default password must be changed to be a secure password. 
you can set to turn on remote access. Just click, put a tick in there. Okay. Uh, and then you've got Google Tech. Universal, uh, universal plug and play helps devices access the network and connect to other devices needed. Okay. Um, simply click on. Sorry, we didn't click on that. Let's click on support. Uh, there's just the log logging here. Uh, let's click on license information, and there you have it. So that's the last bit there. Open source inquiries. Blah blah blah. So this is the skybox. Okay. Right, so I'm going to go back to the menu, main, the main, sorry, home page by clicking here. And that will take me to the main page here, which is the uh, summary status. So um, one of the things that when I got this hub that I changed st straight away was um, the channel settings. Um, so I went into channel settings here and it brings up the menu to your uh, wireless setup. Now, as you can see, underneath the wireless menu here, you've got a 2.5 gigahertz settings and you've also got a 5.6 gigahertz settings. You can add a WPS client as well. Now here, um, I changed my wireless uh, channel to six so i'm going to show you if you click on the button here you can see you can go up from auto all the way down to 13. if you've got it set on auto and you're paying having problems connecting to your laptop or tablet um, it's always a good idea it doesn't matter what routers you've got if you can access um the uh, menu like with the sky it you know it's 192.168.0.1 uh, for the bts oh, i can't think it i think it's dot one dot two five four or it could yeah or it could be dot zero dot two five four but um you know if you've got a belkin an insys virtually any router um once you know where your you know channels wireless channel settings are you can change it from being if it's set on auto and use any one of the 13 channels um you can experiment just go through start with one two three all the way up to 13 and see which one you, some people find that they work better on 13. some most people tend to work on six five six seven um rated Sorry, the wireless settings. So here we go. This is the, uh, we're in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless settings. We assign different channels to your Skyhub randomly. Here we go. To minimize interference with other networks in your area. It shouldn't be necessary to change the wireless channel unless you know it's interference problem from another ne nearby wireless network. It's recommended leaving this set to auto um i would say it's recommended not to leave it in auto but to put it into six five six or seven channel five six or seven um the reason being is it, that's what it is it's auto setting it will go up and down those channels consistently so if there is an interference with the router it will cho it will choose another channel now if your laptop or your tablet is not particularly quick at changing, I mean, this is fairly milliseconds, but changing to the new channel, or it's got to look for the new channel, so it's going to go up and down that channel, oh, eventually find it, but then it might have then move again to another channel. So it could have gone from two right through to 10, and then the, the tablet or, or laptop has got to be chasing and try and find it all the time. Whereas if you leave it at six, it anchors to six and everything else that's around will, will connect to six. Um, obviously, I mean, 
this was what I was taught when I was a B team. Um, it shouldn't interfere with other people's wireless settings. Um, I've always said it on six. I've never had any, that, that's the best setting. Uh, so, you know, once you've clicked on there and then you, if you're in auto here, you come down to six and then you must click apply for it to apply that setting. Same thing if you go into five gigahertz now, uh, and it's telling you about placing your hub, sorry, placing your uh, Sky Hub in to get you know maximum wireless coverage. So in here, there's a bit, little bit more information. Um, you know, you've got password settings and stuff like that. And I just changed. It was just this bit Sky, but I put in the five gigahertz to distinguish from the two point four, uh, so you can see it when you're looking hunting for wireless connectivity connection. Okay. Um, and then you've got it's set in Europe, but then you can change. Again, there's only three. three um settings um i've got it on eight gigahertz um channel 36 whether that's the best channel on the five gigahertz i don't know it could be on the 40 gigahertz that it could be on the best channel but it's going to be sort of trial and error over the next few weeks i'll go through the different settings and see which one performs better over a few days okay um here there are other settings that you can click through etc etc um and that's it so um if you go into if you're having a problem with your net wireless network log in as you into the hub sky hub using uh 192.168 dot zero dot one that's what you put in your browser you'll probably be confronted confronted with the um but well, let's just click out and then that way you can see you are now logged out oh didn't log me out for what reason so let's try it again um, Hmm. Didn't like it. Right, let me just see if I can. Hmm. Strange. Or let me log out. Okay, not a problem. Um. When you when you log in, there you go. It will. You you have to put in the word admin, and the password. The username is admin. The password is Sky. S K Y. And you can log in to there, okay, and then you can go through the menu. So the two point four is where you can really change the channel, and that's where it will be benefits more to you. The five gigahertz is there's nothing really to change there, um, or add to. Okay, let's look. Yeah, there's, there's very little um, that you, you you know this is where you put the password to get in there's a few channels here that you can try out um, for to see if it clears your interference problem but remember this is for the sky Q hub um, the new BT routers are get they you know there's 2.5 2.4 gigahertz and also 5 gigahertz um and it will be the same thing um similar thing you know there'll be different settings for the for the five gigahertz and but there'll be similar settings for the 2.4 gigahertz one of the things that i used to come up because i used to work in bt in the bt broadband uh, repair 
an installation um, group. Literally, um, quite a few times I'd go into someone's premises when there was a problem with connectivity, with wireless connectivity. So, oh, it's not always working. It doesn't log in and logs out. And I would look at the channel settings. It was set on auto, change it to six. A good proportion of the time, probably 65, 70% of the time, that helped to solve the problem. But when you look at, sorry, when you look at the, uh, the person's laptop, a lot of the time the laptop was slow. And the reason why it was slow is because, and this is, I'm telling you now, this is about 90% of the homes that I used to go into with regards to connectivity or being slow or problems with their laptop is they didn't have an up-to-date virus checker, either new or paid, and this there was a ton of spyware on their computer. Um, I was always reluctant to run spyware programs, but uh, you know, to clear spyware programs. Um, I can't remember. Spybot, I think, is I used to use that, and there was one or two others as well that I used to use. Um, and when you run it on their computer, because it was really, really slow, because there was a lot of the time. People used to, when they bought their laptop, and for two years, they'd been running their their laptop. And because they would come with the free software for three months, the customer assumed that they were still being protected because they would see something pop up from McAvee saying, oh, you've got these viruses on your computer. But they weren't actually getting rid of them. They were just showing you that, or they were telling you that your um, virus checker checker uh, account had it expired, and you needed to, um, you know, need to pay for the service. And either people didn't read it, just didn't read it properly, or just assumed they didn't, it wasn't that important. And so, when um, I got a few of those people to actually um, buy the software, because it's rather than giving them free, they just because otherwise they wouldn't do the scans when they need to. Um, and that's the reason why it's free. Um, you have to do the scans on your computer. Um, whereas if you, you know, you get it from McAvee, um, I wouldn't trust Norton's. Um, but if you get it from McAvee and one or two of the other, well, popular Avas and all those kind of business, um, <clears throat> you would suddenly see there was 101, you know, um, um, viruses on their computer and spyware programs, and it would you know clean up their the laptop and increase their speed. Um, so if you're finding that your computer is slow, you need to do a number of things. You need to download, say, a, a registry software a cleaner like a CC CC Cleaner. Um, you can download a free software from Avas, A V A S T dot com. Um, there are other free virus checkers out there, and also you. Uh, I think Spybot. Sometimes some people say I think Spybot tends to put its own um, stuff loaded onto your computer as well. I'm not sure about that. There's other uh, spyware programs out there. There's some free ones out there that you can get. And it's amazed when you actually run them. Um, like sometimes when I run CC Cleaner, my computer feels a lot, it's a lot quicker. Um, I, sometimes, and I also, but I do have a virus checker on my computer. It's vitally important that you have that on your computer. Otherwise, um, I'm not sure what the situation now is with the banks, but if you're going on the web, you know, onto the website and you're going to your banking service and you haven't got any up-to-date virus checker on your computer, um, you could find yourself in trouble if they've accessed your computer and cleared out your account or taken a few 
because you, uh, you know a little bit of money from your account because you didn't protect your laptop from people accessing your important data uh, because the virus checkers and, and the virus paid software will stop any information going from your laptop out to these people and protect you from them so that the, the banks will expect to, to not hear that you have the, either a free or a paid one on your computer and if you haven't I, I, I don't know if anyone's been refused payment but um, I think that will happen in the future I think the banks will say nope you didn't have a, an up-to-date virus checker on your computer, so therefore we're not going to, um, you know, you know what the rules are. You know there's, there's viruses everywhere, and you're supposed to protect your uh, laptop from, um, you know, from getting hacked um, and your account, you know, getting the, your passport details and all that kind of business. So, you know, always um, <clears throat> have, you must have, um, if you're not a real computer bod, you must have a virus checker on your computer. McAvee's, though, is very cheap for the year, £17, £20 for the year. You can get a code from eBay for 20 quid, and, you know, that lasts you for a year. You know, what, what's, what's the problem? Just, you know, don't be so tight. Um... The other thing as well, uh, 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 if you've got a ring doorbell or um, and it's not been connecting properly to your phone, um, it, uh, changing the channel to, from auto to, to six or seven might help um, the ring doorbell to be able to lock onto the Wi-Fi uh, signal better um, that it, uh, because it will be chasing up and down uh, trying to find a signal. Every time the channel changes, it's got to change accordingly and so that's why it will sometimes be slow but if you've got a steady channel all the time it can lock on to that and and less likely to, for you you know having struggled to um to connect into your uh to connect to your uh, ring doorbell so have a look at your channel settings um if you're getting problems with connectivity just changing your channel wireless ch uh, changing your wireless channel might be able to help you um, with better connectivity with your devices. Okay, um, thanks very much for listening. Uh, have a good day.